Hello, everyone. We are live at 5 here at Broadway.com. It is Wednesday, October 31st. Halloween. Woo! Boo! Boo! <laughs> Happy Halloween. I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And over there is Caitlin Moynihan. Mm. None of us are in costume, although <laughs> maybe you're in costume. I'm kind there was a whole debate today about people yeah. being in the office being in costume, and I didn't realize they were in costume. Anyway, you know what? Costume. they served us treats upstairs today, and they gave us like little bags I to ate put too candy many. in. And I my just, bag, I just, my yeah. bag said "Bootiful" on it, so oh. I thought "Bootiful" the Carol King musical could be a fun like Halloween pun. You I don't the, know. You know the emoji with the straight <laughs> line. On yes. um, <laughs> We have a very exciting guest today, Dusty Ray Bottoms, Woo! wink, uh, of RuPaul's Drag Race, who is starring in Cleopatra, a, a really awesome new off-Broadway show will be here. But first, yes. uh, we're going to talk about today's top five. Broadway is getting presidential. Ooh, that is quite true. So as we all know, Lucas Nath's latest play, Hillary and Clinton, is debuting on Broadway this spring. We found out the rest of the cast today. Well, who, who was already in okay, it? Okay, folks know. who are already in it. Yeah. Lori Metcalf, have Amazing. you heard of her? She's going to play Hillary Clinton. Amazing. And John Lithgow is going to play Bill Clinton. Amazing. Today we found out that Peter Francis James is going to portray Barack Obama, whom you might have heard of, and Zach Orth will portray Mark Penn. So this is uh, debuting, well, not debuting, Broadway debuting at the Golden Theater on March 16th, 2019, in advance of an April 18th opening night. Now, so, did you realize that um, Peter Francis James, I always mix up his names because yeah. three first names. Serious? It's a lot. Very talented guy. Yeah. Did you know he played Barack Obama before? I did not know <gasps> that. What? Look at me with my inside what? information. Because when I heard his name, I, right before we came in the room, I thought, wait a minute. I feel like, because he looks a lot like Barack Obama. He really Obama. does, yeah. And he was... He did play uh, Obama in a TV thing called Svetlana. No way, like man. Like in 2010 or something. So it was like a one-off episode. Who I is it about? Who's it's about a Russian hooker spy or something. Oh my gosh. I don't know. It's just, well, a, it's cool. just a fun it's little a TV credit. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Cool. So. Oh, that's really neat. And this play is cool. It takes place during the early days of Hillary Clinton's 20, 2008 presidential campaign. When everything was hopeful. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it, y'all. <laughs> Seriously, sad. Mm -hmm. oh. And we do have some sad news to report today. Yeah, a, uh, a theater legend, Marie Maria Irene Fornes, uh, died at the age of 88. She's a nine-time Obie-winning playwright and mm -hmm. director. Mm -hmm. uh, big mm -hmm. off-Broadway uh, icon, right? Yeah. Um, she died yesterday uh, due to Alzheimer's. Um, she's known, for, she's an avant-garde playwright and director. She, let's say, what she earned, she started in the late 60s. Right, right, right? yep. Uh, she she earned a Pulitzer, uh, she's a Pulitzer finalist. Yep, she was indu uh, inducted to the Theater Hall of Fame just this year. Just this year, or correct. Like just, yeah, she's like a, a very recent one. Yeah. Um, also, there was recently um, a documentary made about um, her experience after she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, kind of looking back on her life. Oh, wow. And that debuted this year as well. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I want to see that. Um, and she, you know, I want to talk about the Waverly Gallery. Yeah, seriously. Actually, which yeah. is similar, uh, which I just saw. You guys, you have to see the Waverly Gallery. Oh, my God, man. Just I was kind of so taken play. by it. Yeah, it was beautiful. Oh. I, I, was, I was sobbing. Uh, I like to cry in the theater, so it was one of my favorite shows, right. like, Ever, uh, Lane May was amazing, but the reason why I brought that up is because um, so Maria Irene Fornes had one Broadway credit, correct? A play called The Office, yep, not the sitcom, and it actually closed in previews, yep. And who was in it? Elaine May and Doris Roberts. And that was the last time Elaine last May was on Broadway. Yeah, you more told than 50 me. years ago, 52 years ago, wow. is when this play debuted, 1966. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty remarkable. And Elaine May is back. Yeah, anyway, 88 yeah. years, uh, nice nice full life. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. And a Tony winner has got a new gig. This is super exciting. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. What's happening? <laughs> All right. I don't know. So, I was at a show. All right, man. <laughs> so we found out today that Leslie Odom Jr. Mm. is starring in the pilot of a comedy series produced by Kerry Washington. Oh. Now, as we know, Leslie Odom Jr. is a Tony winner for Hamilton, and Kerry Washington is back on Broadway right now, about to open in the new play American Son. Right. Uh, so this series, which doesn't have a title yet, uh, is based on the real-life married pastors 
Tor Roberts and Sarah Jakes Roberts. And the characters, Leslie Odom Jr.'s character's name is Leslie, and he plays a pastor, and he and his wife are these, like, hip Los Angeles pastors uh, right. who are, are really good at bringing their church together but aren't so good at bringing their blended family together. Oh. Yeah, so... That, wait, that makes me think of Leap of Faith. I Remember guess, Leslie well, was in Leap of Faith? Yes, that before was he was Broadway famous. Credit, yeah, from Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, and he was in the he was in the choir, and he was like. Wouldn't it be cool if this series was based off of Leap of Faith? Sure. Can Alan Menken write the score? We just like everything series? to have a connection to a Broadway yes, musical. Yes, please. That's just what we like. Um, yeah, but further details on this pilot, in, in addition to other casting, more casting are to come. Cool. Yeah. This fan favorite pair is teaming up once again. Well, because they don't ever, they're never apart. Never. Right? So, uh, <laughs> no. Santino Fontana and Laura Austin, as you may know them, they starred in a musical called Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella on what, Broadway. What? They were fantastic in that show, and they do a lot of concerts together. Yeah. Um, and actually, they're in uh, Washington, D.C. at the Kennedy Center tomorrow night yes. doing a concert. So I was just down there to see Little Shop of Horrors, and I saw their faces nice. on the walls. And while they're there, they're also doing a reading of something called Dear Jack, Dear Louise. This is a new play by Ken Ludwig, who wrote Lend Me a Tenor. And Crazy For You. And Crazy For You, and a bunch of other uh, plays, actually, that have been done regionally that haven't come to New yeah. York. But he's he's a very prolific playwright. Uh, and this is a reading. It's happening at DC's Theater J tomorrow at 6.30. I guess they were like, well, we're in DC. <laughs> might as well. We're doing a concert. We might as well do a play. Uh, it tells this true story. This is fun. Of the courtship of Ken Ludwig, Ludwig's own parents, mm -hmm. who became pen pals and must find their way towards each other, even though they've never met. Aww. So it's basically like every app on my phone. <laughs> um, Laura Ostas was most recently seen on Broadway in Bandstand, which is coming back to the theaters, and maybe we'll see her here soon. And uh, Santina Fontana mm. is going to be a 2019 Tony front runner. <gasps> what, what? What? Did I make a prediction? <laughs> because he is Tootsie in Tootsie, sure and uh, that is coming in the spring. So, Look at that. so we're going to see more of these two. Mm -hmm. And Accio, more footage. Yeah, so... In two days, we have an album coming out of Imogen Heap's incredible music mm -hmm. from Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In anticipation of that, there was a new montage of footage released today from the Tony-winning hit, Harry Potter and the Cursed well, because Child. Because they didn't release much footage at first. Right, right. right. So we have a little bit you gotta more. You got to go see it. Yeah, <laughs> check it out, um, because then you'll have to get yourself to the Lyric Theater and uh, see the show for yourself. But I, a lot of this music was, I think, previously existed on yes. Imogene. Yeah. Yeah. Imogene. Imogene. Imogene Heap's yeah. uh, at recordings. and. Right, so she was deemed not eligible for Tony consideration right. because of that. Right. But uh, yeah, so check that out. Yeah, There's check the more footage. Out, and also on the site, I wanted to say tomorrow is opening night of Torch Song. Yes. That's happening at the, at the Hayes Theater, um, formerly known as the Little Theater, which is where Torch Song Trilogy opened Indeed. on Broadway, which Indeed. is a nice little uh, mm. historical connection. And Michael Urey, who is the star, um, was on Show People. And that episode is going live any minute. It's not okay. live yet, oh. but maybe by the time this episode is over, you can switch over <laughs> and watch that video. He was really incredible, because he's built like quite a theater career. Yeah, he really has. You know, it's funny, like because you know, I first knew him from Ugly Betty. Right. And then uh, I never would have guessed that he would become such a prolific stage actor of our, right. of our time. Well, it's so funny, because he graduated Juilliard, right. and then he fell into the TV world, yeah. and, and he bounced back to what his initial kind of goals were, right? Yeah, and so he says that his um, sneak peek, he said that his dream is to be like an old man of the theater. Oh, no. He said he still wants to do TV and make money. Okay. But, <laughs> but, like but Angela. Yeah, and uh, Ryan Casey, our very talented illustrator, you know, he always draws, uh, he sort of draws some of the stories from show people, right. and he did a great drawing of that. And he also did a really fun um, cartoon strip drawing of the Patti LuPone Shows oh for days, yes. cell phone incident. Cell phone. Remember, <gasps> I do, man. Which is, oh my which you're gonna die when you see that. That's oh an amazing uh, illustration. And what else is happening on the site? Uh, Erica Henningsen, right? Yeah, we have a new surprise. Episode. Episode. Yeah, Ooh. no, no. This oh is too gruel for school. <gasps> is back for a special oh, uh, Halloween Good episode. Dog. So get ready <laughs> for that, uh, and more more video to watch. You yeah, stuff. so um, Dusty Ray Bottoms of RuPaul's Drag Race season 10 is not here yet because it takes a long time to look that good. True. She'll be here any minute. 
Uh, do you guys, if you guys have any questions, oh, there she is. I lied. Oh, she's here. Perfect timing. <gasps> um, okay, so Andy, clearly, there's a much more glamorous yes. um, star to everything. sit in your seat. So, uh, Caitlin, why don't you tell us more about Dusty Ray Bottoms? Gladly, because I am taken aback by the beauty that just walked in to us today. So, to guys, we're about to talk to Dusty Ray Bottoms of the new immersive Cleopatra off. Broadway. We are so excited because this marks her off-Broadway debut, New York stage debut. We're super pumped. You guys may know her from this little show called RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't know. <laughs> um, but be sure to follow her on social media at Dusty Ray Bottoms to stay up to date to her, on her life and the awesome show. And leave all of your questions for her in the comments down below. Please welcome Dusty Ray Bottoms and Paul. What's up? <gasps> Hi, Paul. Hi. How are you? How are you? Are you know, I have to say, it's rare that there is a guest that's taller than me <laughs> and with better hair. Yes. So <laughs> you win, I lose. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. This is not a Halloween. This is not Halloween for you. This is. Oh, no. This is just, this is why I go to the grocery store. Right. And really. Right. This is just work, work, work drag. <laughs> Uh, how are you? Fantastic. So excited you're on the theater scene. Oh, I am so ecstatic to be on stage yeah. in New York City. It's what we have, uh, we moved to New York to do and uh -huh. we dream of. And uh, I, you know, I don't call this really my off-Broadway debut because I have been working <gasps> just off-Broadway in a bar <laughs> on a stage <laughs> okay. for the yes. past five years as right. a drag queen, you know? Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're right back yeah. home where we belong. Because you are a New York City drag queen. Yes. And you know, every year when there's a new season of Drag Race, it's always kind of like, where are they from? Where are they from and then I'm always rooting for the New York the New York girls we had five this year I know so crazy yeah it was a lot um so what is it like now to sort of come back as you know I mean it's a big to be one of the drag race it's turned into quite a thing yeah I mean it becomes a career it becomes a whole thing to manage and there, I know there's opportunities and bars all over the place and clubs and it becomes a whole thing. Well, um, you know, I've, I've always wanted to go back to the stage and this was a great opportunity. And now uh, we're in our second weeks of preview. Uh -huh. And this cast was the perfect group of people to come back to. So how'd they you were, get involved with it? What, um, what is it? Let's talk about Cleopatra. So Cleopatra, it's a new off-Broadway immersive experience. Um, it takes place at the uh, Chelsea Music Hall, yep. uh, right underneath Chelsea uh, Market. And uh, it's a really great venue. Um, the show is really fun. It's like, uh, if you like Hamilton, mm -hmm. you'll love this. It tells the story of Cleo uh, Cleopatra, her demise, her affair with Mark Anthony, and it's just, it's hot. It's it everything. looks super sexy. Yeah, it's so much fun. I play the MC, uh -huh. so I kind of narrate you through her story, okay. uh, create some mischief, and uh -huh. do a little runway walk off. Do you have, well, of course, do mm -hmm. you have um, theater, did you come from theater at all? Yeah, as soon as I popped out on my mom, I was like tap dancing and on okay. stage. Where was but that? It was like, uh, well, I think the first play I ever did was I was in fourth grade and it was Annie. Oh. And I think I was Mr. Bundles. Oh my God, I was grader. just about to say, were you Could Mr. you imagine? Bundles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be a guy in Annie. Mr. Bundles yeah, or Mr. Drake Bundles. the Butler. <laughs> the best parts for sure. Yeah, and uh, church plays and all that, then high school. I went to college at Wright State University and mm -hmm. studied uh, acting and musical theater there. Okay. And then um, we came to New York and became a drag queen. Nice. Yeah. So you are a real like, uh, theater queen. Yeah, love yeah. the theater. So this is exactly what you want to be doing. Absolutely. So an opportunity to be involved in a hot new off-Broadway show is like perfect. Oh, sign me up, ship me out, I am there. <laughs> Actually, I, that's what happened. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it like, since it's immersive, so in other words, the audience is very involved in what's happening. Absolutely. And, and I saw footage Lap of it. Lap dances, yeah, it's, it's very, walk offs Yeah, so yes. what is it like dealing with, the, are you like close to the audience? You're used to working a yeah crowd. so it, it's not that weird for me because um i think th i think the only change is uh normally when i work the crowd there i don't have like lines i can just say what i want to right and then there are times where i'm like oh i am acting right but now i'm it's just like it's i don't know yeah you know what script. i'm saying yeah. there's a script yeah. and that's that's weird sometimes <laughs> when there's an audience because i have to stick to that script right yeah right all right there's a script i have to do um so cleopatra this, i mean this is like a fun story did you have to like dig and i i'm noticing actually that you're very yeah you're, you're giving us i'm coming for her gig really okay 
That's that's <laughs> what now, that's the what MC. the whole musical is about. <laughs> this drag queen coming from Cleopatra's gig. No, um, it tells like uh, the, her last days, her a love mm-hmm. affair with uh, Mark Antony. Did he really win the war for her? I don't know. You have to come see mm-hmm. uh, the drama with that and Octavian, and uh, maybe uh, Cleopatra also has a lesbian lover we don't Ooh. know about. Mm. Okay. Mm. And what's the music? What's it? What's, what's uh, it's very with like uh, EDM pop. Mm. Uh, cool. Yeah. The awesome. bass is right in your chest, like booming through you. Uh-huh. It's a lot of fun. It's I love cool. being so close to your polka dots. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, I do. I do like it. I've never My eye herpes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> your makeup is incredible. Thank you. So how long does this take? Uh, this took me uh, two and a half hours today. Wow. Thank yeah. you. Wow. It was, worth, it was worth the wait. It's great. Go into the theater three hours before curtain. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then do that shit. Do you have any uh, musical theater roles that you would love to like do? Like any classic? Yeah, um, but actually as a boy. Okay. I would love to play George and She Loves Me. Oh. Like that is the leading role I want to play. Wow, how like, fun. I love that show. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. And then I would also, uh, I just wish I could be like a little Jewish so I could be the dad in Carolina Change. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I'll. I don't think I could play that part ever, or any part in that uh, show. Really, I just love that show. You really have proven what a show queen you are. That those were your two choices, <laughs> right? by the way. Yeah, those are very. Because you could have just said like, "I'll be Miss Hannigan." Oh you know, no, that's yeah, everyone. Obvious. Everyone wants that. <laughs> but I would do that in drag. That would be fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. Why not? Yeah. I saw Wanda Sykes do it. Really? Yeah, it was interesting. Oh word. Uh, <laughs> um, I would go. So it was. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, so I want to actually talk to you. You were very fantastic on Drag Race. Thank you. Uh, this, and it's been like six months, right? I've, I've done about like six well, months. Uh, well, I, since it aired. Yeah, right. about six months since it yeah, aired. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been done with o- over a year right. now, which is so crazy. Thing. That's the weird thing, how you tape it, and then you kind of like sit on that information yeah. for a long time. Um, you, you got a lot of press because of, and it was, it was really moving, and audiences really kind of fell in love with you because of the uh, gay conversion therapy, Mm -hmm. your stories and your experiences with that. And I wanted to bring that up just because I actually just saw the Waverly Gallery on Broadway. Oh, work. Which which I highly recommend. Um, And Lucas uh, Hedges is in it. And he's in that new boy, that new movie, Boy Boy Erased, Erased. which is about that. So I think it's really interesting because I feel like in the next couple months, as he's like campaigning for his Oscar, we're going to be talk. This is this this topic is going to be coming up again, and you were really sort of a, a forefront person talking about it. So it's is it interesting that people that it's sort of out there more because when I first heard about gay conversion therapy, it felt like something that maybe like stopped in the seventies, right? And it's so fascinating to to think oh, of no, it it's, as it's something still happening. that's still happening. And yeah, so what's yeah. it been like sharing that story? and um, meeting people, and what, what, what's it been like sort of having that story out there? So uh, before I shared that story uh, on a large scale, I would talk to it with people who had never experienced what yeah. I had gone through, right? Mm-hmm. So normally you just, they kind of like cock your head sideways and smile, <laughs> and like, oh, uh, y- you know? Yeah. Um, but after telling my story, I was flooded with people who had also gone through, yeah. and it was just like, that blew my mind. Because I, it just let me know that I wasn't alone in telling right. my, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it just came back full circle and helped me out so much because I had never uh, shared that with someone mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Is, it, um, is it fun? What, what I think is really cool about Drag Race is that you're obviously extremely recognizable when you're like this. Mm-hmm. But then you also, maybe not necessarily, you can walk around very uh, incognito, too. Depends on the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> really? Hell's Kitchen, you, Chelsea, you're going to spot me. No matter me. what. Like, yeah, right, because yeah, right, they, sure. they, they, know, they know both your looks. Yeah. But I feel like you can just like do like a low hat and right. like a, that look. Every once in a while, I get, I get a shout out on the train. Yeah. On the street. It's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, Caitlin. Yes. What are people saying <gasps> about got, this fantastic uh, star next to me? Yes, we got a lot of questions. So the first question is, what because it is immersive, mm-hmm. what has been like the craziest or most fun fan reaction or encounter during so, the show? So um, we do a little uh, uh, walk the Nile section where you walk the runway and the winner wins <laughs> shots uh, at the show. Incredible. Because um, there is a bar at the show. So you can drink, you can eat, you can do all that stuff. Uh, uh, so we had three contestants come up, three guys. We were not expecting them to, that we thought we were just going to walk and just like 
they served so much <laughs> sass. <laughs> the best walks we have ever, like all three of them won. Like wow. we couldn't send anyone. Wow. Like there was, it, we, all of us were so gagged. The audience was gagged. <laughs> it, it was a really, I wish we had it on tape. It was a good moment. Wow. Really great moment. So people can definitely come with their moves ready. If they oh, please come to dressed for Egypt. Oh. You will definitely get picked to walk the runway. We highly encourage that. It's everything. Awesome. It's a club atmosphere. We want you to be a club kid with us and just let your hair down and have a fun time. Cool. I love that. I love yeah. that. Cool. So <clears throat> another question is, what drew you to this show specifically since you mentioned that you always wanted to do theater growing up? Like, what made you want to do this one? Well, um... This was uh, such a great show for me to get my feet wet back into the theater. Mm -hmm. Since I had been performing in nightclubs and bars for the mm -hmm. past five years, um, this was an easy role for me to, to step into. I'm in seeing a club event uh, show. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that really appealed to me. I was like, this is a good like, transition yeah. to like, see what theater's like again, but I don't have to like, be someone completely crazy or and like, you're a New Yorker so right. you're home absolutely so when you go out and do um, gigs and places what is the luggage like oh I have <laughs> two suitcases and two carry-ons oh my god and like one suit is just all hair. It's a it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so is it it's down a, to a system though, like it, a science. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You, you've you've got your looks and you've got your uh, your uh, numbers that are assigned to those looks, mm -hmm. and you don't change that. It makes it easy. You keep it like that. Streamline it. How often do you like think like I need a new look? Like I want to come up with it. And and you must have like friends that help. Do you have like a team? Like how oh, do you absolutely. like? How do you? My like, team is the best up? team. I have like four designers I go to who oh. are everything. Uh, my fiance does hair for me. Mm -hmm. I reach out to a couple of other people to do hair. Um, uh, before I went on Drag Race, uh, a lot of the season 10 girls were doing a lot of their looks and a lot of their hair um, themselves. Yeah. But now they're not even able to make anything for anyone or themselves, let alone, because uh, they're so busy. So they're outsourcing a lot. And uh, yeah, our teams are awesome. They take care of us and I love them so much. Are you good at makeup yourself? No, terrible. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I, lo I love looking at it up close. Thank you so much. So good. <clears throat> okay, so Daniel asks, how do you keep yourself, like, physically, eight, like, you're doing this show eight times, like, a bunch of times, and you're doing it in drag, you're getting ready. How do you keep your body, like, and f mentally, physically healthy and ready to go? Sleep. Whenever they give us a break, like, I'm, like, over in the corner trying to catch some Z's for sure. Um, I don't, when the when we're done with rehearsal, I go home and sleep as long as I can. Mm -hmm. um, just as much rest as possible. I mean, we've been pulling 12 hour days for the past like week and a half, two weeks, wow. uh, just to get the show up into previews. And um, it, it's really stressful, but like eating healthy, sleep, lots of water, lots of caffeine. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. I, love, I that. love sleep. <laughs> I've been exploring sleeping recently. Yeah. More sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's important. Really great. It actually makes a huge difference. So get some sleep, kids. Get some sleep, kids. But the, but you actually this show. What's the schedule like of the show? I, I know there's like a there's like a brunch show in addition uh, to Sunday. We're working on our brunch show. Oh, that's it's, cool. Yeah, yeah. But this um, is normally like a night a night experience. Right. Where yeah. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday we have a show at seven, then nine o'clock. Okay. <gasps> Cool. Two shows on those days. Because yeah. day drag is a lot of work. Day drag is frightening. <laughs> it is a, it's painful. You cry in the morning while you're putting on. You're like, no. I just woke up. <laughs> Are you going to always watch uh, the future drag races? And I mean, what? how invested will you be in when the new season starts? Um, you know, I, th I will always watch. Um, I will support my future sisters um, because I know what it takes to go through it and mm -hmm. what the experience is like. Um, as far as being an enthusiastic fan on uh, having an opinion on who I think should win or how people are doing, like, not really interested in that anymore. Yeah. Like, going through it has really washed that, taken that away from me. Yeah. And, uh, I, I like that in some aspects, but mm -hmm. I miss, like, you know, What's your biggest being a super piece of fan. advice you would give someone who, who gets cast? Oh, um, just be yourself at all costs. Um, there is no one that can take your spot. Like, you are cast for a reason. Like, there is no other Dusty Ray Bottoms. Like, mm -hmm. I was put on there for a reason, and no one can fill those shoes. So um, just strictly be yourself. Don't put anything on. Don't try to be Alaska or mm -hmm. Sharon or yeah. Jinx Monsoon. Just do you. And uh, uh, let the critiques go in one ear and out the other <laughs> as good as you can. Yeah. 
What I love about it is that you all get a platform, and and as a viewer, I forget who wins. Right. I always forget who won, and then you know. But what's so? But you don't forget the personalities you meet, and you don't forget you know the the connection you make with people, and you really do get to see your fans always, and they're really there. And these oh, people, it's been the best meeting it. them all over the world. It's been so awesome. What was your favorite place you got to like travel? Um, I absolutely love going to Honolulu. Ooh, um, they've yeah. had me twice this year at Scarlet, uh -huh. and it is just like, to stay the people there, they, they call everyone cousin, and they treat everyone like their cousin. Mm -hmm. I think that is so sweet, and I love that. I just, I just like, I, I loved it. It's everything. You have I to go to Hawaii. Honolulu. I love it. I love Hawaii. They love drag. Oh. Like, they go bananas over it. I just, it was like, <laughs> work. I want to move in. <laughs> I love well, Maybe that. you can retire. Maybe, yeah. Very that. Eventually, yeah. That plane ride off there is not worth doing to go anywhere <laughs> right, else, really. No, eventually, it's... you could just live on the island, <laughs> yeah. do drag a little bit, a little bit. Okay. Get a pink convertible. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm into that. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for I, I can't me. wait to see Cleopatra. Girl, that... wait till you hear these vocals. Really? My castmates are sick. Yeah. Naya, Christian, and Corbin, uh -huh. uh, and Sydney, they sing the house down. Okay. You're going to be so gagged. All right. You're going to lie. I'm going to gag. You're all going to mm. gag. It's a, a brand, it's a new venue, right? Yes. It's called Chelsea Music Hall. And you can get tickets on Broadway.com. Uh, and you could meet Dusty Ray Vollins and go that. with your moves and walk the runway and yes. wear your Cleopatra drag and polka dots, all of it. It's going to be everything. Thank you so much for being here. Thank so you, nice Kelly. to meet you. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Sure thing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast form by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow and we talk to Angela Baumgartner and Pedro Kualawa from the national tour of The King and I.